how does one avoid being hacked or how do they keep their security? Yeah. Um, we get caught up in our heads a whole lot that getting hacked is a stigma. You're going to get hacked in 2025. Mm -hmm. You cannot stop it. If I needed to go after you, I'm going to get in you. I'm, there's just, you're not going to do it. You're not going to stop me. There's just too much data, too much code. AI is creating all kinds of new fast code. It's also creating some vulnerable code. It's also finding vulnerabilities. It's a little meta. Never but make the a point, database on curse. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And so it sounds like from personal experience. No, I, but <laughs> the part I'm getting at is I th actually think we as a whole have to fundamentally change our perspective on this. There's still things that you have to do. Like for instance, the good old fashioned, like use an app to create your unique passwords for you every time. You shouldn't be able to remember your passwords. I don't care which one you use. One pass, last pass, whatever. Go use one of those. I'll tell you, that makes it so freaking hard on me. Like when I can just go out and buy your password off the dark web because I know you reused it over and over, like, that makes my job so easy. Mm -hmm. That annoying phone pop-up thing of like the two-factor authentication, that now makes me have to get into your phone, not only get into your account, but get into your phone. That is a huge way to protect yourself. Like it is so much harder I have to go through all kinds of extra hurdles. I can still get there if I want, but it just, it's, it's like outrunning a bear, right? You just don't want to be the slowest person. <laughs> you know, these simple, those two things. And the other part is when you do get hacked, when somebody does get your password and they do register a phone as you, you know, they call up Verizon and say, Verizon, I promise I'm so-and-so they're going to get in eventually. And when that happens, like it's about minimizing, like not preventing you from getting sick. Like if I told you, I can make sure you don't get cancer. You'd tell me I'm a liar. Mm -hmm. I'm now telling you the same thing. You can't prevent yourself from getting hacked. But what you can do is when you do get hacked, hopefully you're only getting hacked by the hardcore. And when you do, for instance, get hacked, you want to find it early. You don't want to wait till it's like stage four cancer and terminal. You want to find it real early. And so I think that what most people don't realize, especially from a personal level, sometimes the best thing in your pocket it's just having somebody to call, right? If you got hacked, you could hassle me, right? On a mm -hmm. personal level. And I'm not saying it doesn't always have to be a company. This isn't a vendor pitch, but you don't got to go at it alone. Like I think people, like we never went at it alone in the intelligence world. Mm -hmm. If we couldn't do it, we'd call the Brits. The Brits couldn't do it, we'd call the Australians, right? We'd call the Canadians, et cetera. And I just think that people sometimes forget these things of like, when you get hacked, you sometimes got to have somebody to call. And sometimes, by the way, people don't always pick up. Facebook isn't known for being or meta for being the greatest at helping you get your account back. No. Sometimes they're like, sorry, you don't pay us anything. Remember you're the product and they don't help you unless you're paying like ads and then they'll do it because they want you to spend more ad money. But I think that type of like basic advice for the normal user. Notice I didn't say anything about patching. I didn't say all that typical advice that most people do. Watch your links that you click. You're going to click the wrong links. What I want you to do is when you do get compromised, I hope that by having a unique password, they're only getting into one thing, not all mm -hmm. things. When they do get that password, I want them to have to jump through another hurdle of getting a unique code or some physical device you have to plug in. To be very frank, if you did those two and coupled it with a really good backup, you're probably better than, you know, at least the slowest person out running the bear. And when you do get wrecked, you hopefully have somebody to call. And just adding in, what would be some quick red flags you'd want to check out? Because you mentioned like catch it early. Yeah, catch it early. So the biggest ones, like when hackers used to go at things, when I used to go at things, mm -hmm. I used to go for your, we call it in the technical terms, an endpoint. But that just means like a laptop or like a workstation, a desktop computer or a server. And what happens is, you know, it's hard to find out. Like you don't know if your server is hacked. You don't know if your desktop, it's really complex. But nowadays, people go after your identity because if I can just go after, I don't mean your social security number, you know, something like that. I'm talking about like how many things, you know, if you use Gmail or you use Microsoft Outlook, right? Office 365, usually with that one account, you can log into like nine things. Mm -hmm. That's what hackers are really going after. Probably these guilty days. of that. <laughs> Dude, 100%. And if I got into yours, I bet I could get into like a business. You might have a SharePoint. You probably have all kinds of different apps that you log into, et cetera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, securing that sucker because what happens is it's early finding like sometimes these hackers are lame what i mean by this is they'll log in from like north africa 
you're probably not in North Africa that day. Mm -hmm. Having something that periodically checking or having somebody for you checking and saying, nah, you're not from North Africa. By the way, people that are slightly better, they use a VPN, the same thing that allows you to watch, you know, Netflix shows in, in Europe. They'll use that. And now they're logging in from the U.S. Because a lot of people are like, well, I'll just say only U.S. Well, guess what? They can log in from the U.S. too. They'll use the same VPN, right? And log in. Yep. And so checking these things periodic, just like you do a periodic check-in with the doctor, you know, most websites like your key ones, think of your Gmail, your at Microsoft 365. You can say, show me devices I'm logged in at. Review those devices. If you still have your old iPhone 13 and you're now on the 17 and you don't need that 13 anymore, go ahead and say, kill that session, log them off. If you have, for instance, locations that you're like, oh, I came here to Dallas and I signed in one time, but I'm no longer in Dallas. I don't need the Dallas session anymore. Kill that sucker off. But the part that I'm getting at is doing that's really hard. You imagine if I told you, like, give yourself your own physical, right? You might be able to check for basic lumps, but you need help. And mm -hmm. that's where I went with just having, even if it's a friend, a geeky friend, come to a company, but like you can't go through cybersecurity alone. And I'll be very frank, even with me, who's like a hardcore geek, I still have people I call because it's just too much. You can't know it all. It's just like being a doctor that doesn't have any specialization. Your optometrist is not the same person as your dentist. It's not the same thing as your neurologist. And optometry and neurology are kind of related-ish, mm -hmm. but also not. So the point that I'm getting at is you sometimes need, you know, experience. You know, you need to surround yourself with that. But if you do the basics, unique password, two-factor, audit your logins, where they came from, your logged-in sessions on the ones that really matter. You know, nobody cares if your Pinterest is hacked. Maybe there's something slightly embarrassed. That's not what I'm talking about. Check your bank, check your main accounts. And then as businesses, you have to think of your equivalent. Mm -hmm. Because when the shady version of me, the cybercrime version of me, I'm not looking at your Pinterest. I want to know where you run payroll. Not because I'm going to steal your payroll, but what I'm going to look for is how do I lock you out of your payroll for six weeks? Because there's no better way I know how to ask you for a $50,000 ransom or a $100,000 ransom if you can't run your payroll or you can't run logistics and schedule a truck for six weeks, your business isn't working. You're not making money and you're going to pay me whatever I want because I'm locking you out of these systems. That's how hacking works in 2025. So you need to do these not on just your personal accounts, but if you're like business with a business, you better know what your key core assets are. You better protect your assets. It should be like a shirt.